Good evening everyone, welcome to Tom Plays Factorio for Absolute Beginners. This isn't a strategy game, it's really a resource management, that's factory builder. It's been around for a while, um, so a lot of people probably have tried it, but I just thought because I've enjoyed the game and pretty familiar with it now, I thought other people who like strategy games might like this as well, and just in case anyone hasn't tried it, or for any reason has struggled with it, I thought I'd do an absolute beginner's guide. So yeah, new game. So the idea is that you crash land on an alien planet, you have relatively few resources to start with, and you have to automate, automate, automate until you are able to build a new spaceship and escape. Let's go with all the defaults, they should be fine. And here we are. So, First thing is not to panic. There are hostiles here, but especially if we can avoid polluting too much at first and cutting down trees and stuff, they probably won't actually seek us out for quite a while. So if we just keep away from them, and they are visible on the map, it's not a huge rush. Don't feel like you have to be perfect or that you have to move at like warp speed 10. It's... Um, I, I see this as quite a relaxing game, really. Part of that's the music, which does help. But yeah, so we've got our little man here, and use the WASD keys to move him around. Camera always follows you, which is kind of one way you can tell it's not a real strategy game. Um, you can zoom in and out, which is very handy. If you want to get a better view of the area around you, you can press the M key, which brings up the map. Again, you can zoom in and out on that. So you can see these red areas. These are the enemy. They're bases, in fact, which is why they're showing up as so big. We are not in a position to take those on right now, so we need to avoid them as much as possible. You can also see the four main resources that we're going to need a lot of. There's iron, quite lucky here, I can actually see three lots of iron, which is the thing we need the most of. Copper, which is the thing we need the second most of, we do need a lot of copper. Coal and stone. There are also crude oil and uranium somewhere. We don't need them yet, but we will. So we are going to have to find them. Okay, if you press the E key, pulls up your inventory. So we start with three resources. We've got a burner mining drill, a stone furnace and some wood. And we've also got a bunch of these recipes in four sections. So these are the things we know how to build. We're going to have to expand this immensely. But for now, this is what we're dealing with. OK, so the first thing we want to do is get any remaining resources from our spaceship. So the spaceship is essentially a container. So if you have it highlighted when we left click, we can see inside it. You can put things in if you want and you can take things out. So we want to take out the firearm magazines. We actually ideally want to put these down here so that they're loaded into our gun. So we start with a pistol. You can switch weapons with tab, only we can't because we don't have one. And you can shoot with a space bar. Only, it only does that if there's actually something to shoot at, so you don't tend to waste ammo. This should be fine for handling any stray enemies we come across, but we can't take on a base with a pistol. At least, I have no desire to do so. Okay, so let's just check the rest. I've got some iron plates, which are very useful. 
Now as an alternative to opening these as a container, we could also mine them, which will get rid of the bits of spaceship from the game, stop them from taking up space, and it will also give us all the contents. But that's all it gives us, you don't get anything extra for mining them. So generally, selecting and moving things is left mouse button, mining you hold down the right mouse button. Okay. So to start with, uh, let's see, most of our resources are up and left. So just to start with, if you want to mine something manually, should probably start with a coal actually. You literally just hold down the right mouse button. Our guy's got a pickaxe, which never wears out. Can be improved, but it never wears out. And for as long as you keep the button held down, he will just keep mining. Unless it runs out of coal, but that's very unlikely when you're mining by hand, especially with coal. Okay, so let us set up a burner mining drill so anything with burner on the front I might just put it on the boundary is powered by fuel usually coal you can use wood as well but I'd recommend not doing because wood is important for other things so I try not to use it as fuel if I can avoid it. You can see at the moment it's flashing up but it doesn't have fuel. And you can see there's a little arrow pointing to where it's going to come out. The mining drills will automatically put things in containers. So if we make an iron chest, nice basic container, put it where the arrow is. And then we're going to put some coal in here. And it's actually mining coal for us. Which is fine, I was half expecting it to mine iron. It may even mine both because it's on the boundary. But both are useful. So I'm just going to mine some coal, not coal, copper by hand. So you see when we mine copper, we're actually getting copper ore. This is not useful, I don't think. I can't think of anything that uses copper ore, so we're going to have to smelt it into copper plate which is what the stone furnace is for so those are our two tools that we begin with we've got one mining drill and one stone furnace so if I just put the stone furnace down anywhere we can load some copper into it but it needs coal so oh yeah he's doing both coal and iron so that's good because we won't want to do that later Whereas at the moment it's not a problem because it's all going into a chest so we can select which item we want at any given time. So copper ore goes in, copper plate goes out and you can just leave that running. Okay, so given this seems to be doing iron now, I'm going to mine some more coal on the boundary. I want to do the boundary now because once we've got everything automated we won't be able to afford to be mining the wrong thing. So this area on the boundary between iron and copper and iron and coal is very unuseful for later. Whereas right now it's usable. Okay. So, as well as picking stuff up and moving it, if you hold down the shift button and just click on it, it'll automatically figure out where it wants you to put it. Obviously that only works if it's somewhere obvious for that particular thing to go, but it does save a lot of time. So like this iron ore, we can just collect, which is good. This has stopped because all the copper plates has been smelted, so we've put the iron in. Now this is important. You can't have iron and copper in the same place, so if this had been copper ore, it would have carried on making it. But as it's iron ore, we need to move the copper before it can make any iron plate. Which is fine. So I'm not going to mine some more copper. So this tends to be what happens in the game. You set up as much as you can automated, and then anything that needs to be done by hand, you do while the automated stuff is happening. So at the moment, most of the mining we're having to do by hand.
but hopefully by the end of this session we will be doing very little mining by hand. And we'll have improved a couple of other things as well. Okay, still getting iron, that's fine, so I will carry on mining copper by hand. Keep calling the coal copper and vice versa. Keep mining coal by hand. So yeah, most of what we need is iron plate and copper plate. So most of our efforts right now are around getting as much of both as we possibly can. Once I'm reasonably comfortable that we're filling those up as much as possible, we'll start going further afield and collect some other things we need. Right. Let's put more iron in there. So this is alternating between coal and iron. Honestly, it's probably not a bad thing at this stage. You can see on the right of the screen, it shows the amount of copper left in the ground here. So I'm deliberately mining one of the least, one of the areas where it's sparsest. Because if we set up a mining drill here, we would probably have to move it fairly soon. I don't think it's any slower doing it in a sparse area, so it doesn't make any difference at the moment. Let's zoom out a little. We can just keep an eye on our two automated things. Yep, that has stopped. It's probably just run out of iron. It has. So let's put a load of copper ore in there. How are we doing here? We've got some iron ore coming. Okay. So I'll mine copper. I'd like to get to the point where we're leaving the smelter with um, 50 iron. Every item has a maximum amount that can fit in a single square in your inventory and in containers. So for a lot of things it's 50. So if we can load the smelter up with 50 iron ore and a decent amount of coal, I'll feel that I can leave it. Might depend a bit on whether this burner miner keeps doing iron. Okay, it is doing, so that's not so bad. Slowed you up. Right, I might go a little bit further afield anyway. Where was the stone? Up there. Okay. Oh yeah, here we are. So we're not going to need a lot of stone at the start, but we do need a bit. I'm considering making a second stone furnace, and also we are going to want to make a boiler, which also requires a stone furnace as part of its makeup. So I think we only actually need 10 stone, but there's no harm in grabbing a lot of it more. While we're up here, I can't help noticing there's some dead trees. So I'm just going to grab them. So these, the dead trees have the least effect on pollution. So if we can mine these rather than any trees with leaves on. I think these vertical ones are actually dead as well. But there's so many lying around that are lying down. I might just grab those first. You often get more of the dead ones in deserts rather than the uh, forests, oddly enough. Just thinking while we're up here, let's just grab these. Keeping a bit of an eye on the minimap to make sure I don't go near anything red. Because we do not want to walk into a base right now. But I think we're fine. Okay, are we up to 50 yet? Almost. And we've also got some coal. There we go. Perfect. 
Right, so let me load you with 50 iron. Oh, grab the copper first. And I'm going to go down here because I think there was some dead trees down here as well. So, as you may have noticed, there's a day-night cycle on this planet. When it does go dark, our um, little guy has got a torch which doesn't require power, never runs out. But the day-night cycle becomes quite important later on when we develop solar power, because of course solar power will only work during daytime. So we have to use batteries and things. It's worth mentioning that as well as getting stone from the main stone area, you can also do these rocks. That will give you a lot of stone. So it's a good one for mining by hand. And it also sometimes gives you coal, I think. Not on that occasion though. Okay, brilliant. Let us think about the next step. So, our biggest problem at the moment is that we're constantly having to supply coal to everyone. So, well, no, that's not true. Our biggest problem at the moment is we're having to mine most stuff by hand. So we could make more of these burner mining drills, but we would have to supply coal to every single one. So personally, I would rather not bother making any more burner stuff. And let's go electrical. So to go electrical, we're going to want, instead of a burner mining drill, we're going to want an electric mining drill. Now you'll notice that the recipe calls for more than just iron plate and copper plate. It calls for iron gear wheels, electronic circuits. Now we could make these manually. But there's no actual need to. If we click on it, it does tell us what the total raw is. And... Um, that's just in terms of iron plate and copper plate. And if we click on it, it will automatically make all the constituent components. And then make the mining drill. So that's perfect. So we've now got an electric mining drill. Which, where should I set this? I'm going to set it heading left because otherwise the copper is going to be in the way. Okay, so this is flashing up a yellow symbol. That actually means that there's nothing to supply power to it. So it doesn't even mean that there's no power. It means there's nothing to even supply power. So we've got a way to go before we can actually start using that. However, when we do use it, we're going to need another chest to store all the iron in. So I'm going to put that in place already. One thing I didn't mention was you can rotate items with the R key if you hover over them and before you place them down. So yeah, in this case we want the arrow heading right because I'm planning to make a line of these and like gradually eat away at this. Okay, let's get you doing more iron. Put more coal in. Right, so what else do we need? Okay, so to make electricity we need three things. <laughs> Technically four things. We need a body of water, which there will be one nearby, there always is. We need an offshore pump, which mysteriously requires no power. I think basically so you can get off the ground, so we'll make that. So that will pump the water out. We then want to pump that into a boiler. And we then need a steam engine. So we don't have nearly enough iron yet make those things although we should have a bit more there we go so boiler so that will take the water that's pumped into it by the offshore pump and turn it into steam by burning coal so there's still going to be coal involved and then the steam engine will turn the steam into electricity for us which is great Okay, so there are a few places we could put this, 
I might just try over here. It's probably the closest body of water. Nope, more wood. Okay, let's see. Right, so first of all, the offshore pump. I want that here. So then I'm going to want the boiler in line with it. So the boiler, if we look at it, this is in line. There's an entrance and an exit for water. And there's also a an exit at the bottom at the moment for steam. So you can see it's got no coal. It's also got no water, but it doesn't seem to be complaining about that right now. And then the steam engine, again, needs to be in line. And it's got an entrance and exit for steam. Right, to connect these up, not gonna worry about the coal for now. But to get the water moving into the boiler, we need pipes. So that's these things here. And we literally just run along. Okay. Let's put that back. Okay, so we've got these pipes here. If we hover over them, we can see they're working. They've got water. The boiler has got water in. You can actually see it says 200 of 200. Whereas down here, you can see um, no input fluid is the thing that tells us it doesn't have anything. The problem with this is I can't run through it basically blocking me which isn't a huge problem now but if we keep using these overland pipes it's gonna seriously hurt us so what we should do instead is we'll pick these up that's literally just like mining them but it just goes into your inventory again we haven't lost any pipes and we're going to instead use these pipe to ground so these always come in pairs when you make one it actually makes two the idea is that these are pipes that go into the ground and then they travel through the ground so you get this dashed yellow line showing where they travel and it can only go a certain distance so that is the longest pipe to ground we can have and then we'd have to carry it on like that to make it any longer so if we just put these in place Need to rotate these so that they match up with the actual pipes. But I believe that should do it. Still no input fluid because the boiler isn't working. But I think we sorted and we can actually go through these areas. So yeah, the offshore pump is mysteriously working. But the boiler needs coal to produce steam which will then produce electricity. However, that is not enough. We also need to get the electricity somewhere. So we've again got this um, yellow thing. You see the no fuel is red and no electricity will be yellow. This just means that there's nowhere for it to go. Or in the case of the electric mine, that it's not, there's nowhere for it to receive electricity from. Just grab these. Do you need more coal? Yeah, I thought you might. You've stopped. So let's pick up your iron and smelt you. So we're basically going to use electrical pylons to transfer the electricity. So that is why we've been saving the wood. Because at the moment, our only option is a small electrical pole, which requires wood to make. We're going to need enough of these that they're going to be the first thing I'm putting in the shortcuts down here. This bar down here is for shortcuts for anything that you use very often. Okay, so if we grab one, you can see this blue area. This is the area that it can pick up electricity from and provide electricity to. So we're going to need that to be within range of the steam engine. You can see the yellow thing has disappeared now. We're still not producing any electricity. Let's just get them out of the way just in case I decide to have steam engines later in a line. I don't think I will, but just in case. But there's now the infrastructure there to provide it. 
you can see that they were limited to how far these travel, but you can actually see the wire for these. So it's pretty straightforward to work out how closely we need to space these together. Right. You can put these on top of the iron ore, by the way. It doesn't cause any harm to do that. Okay, so now that has changed from there's nothing to supply electricity to I don't have any electricity. So that's simply a matter of taking coal to the boiler. So plenty of coal in there. So let's put, we don't have much coal, but let's put it in just to demonstrate the principle. Oops. There we go. So we're now producing steam and steam is being used to create electricity. So we should find that our electrical mining drill is now mining and producing iron ore, which is brilliant. So that's good, that's a bit better. We could now, if we wanted, set up electrical mining drills for copper, iron, coal and stone power them all from there and the only places we would then need to take coal to are the stone furnace and the boiler but the boiler is quite a walk so the next bit of automation I want to do is we're going to try and automate taking the coal to the boiler for that we're going to want an electric mining drill for coal so let's start there But well, before we power it, let's make sure it can actually move the coal. So this time, instead of making a chest, we're going to use conveyor belts, which in this case are called transport belts. These are the slowest. These again, do not require any power to operate. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we're gonna need so many of these that they are again going into the shortcut bar, most definitely. So let me just think. How do we want this to appear at the boilers? Honestly, it might be a little tricky. Let's have it come to here though. I think this will do. I'm doing quite well with this one because the coal is quite close to the water. So normally I'd have to go further than this and it'd take longer to set up. We've run out of iron though. Hopefully our friend here has made us some more iron ore. Let's just give you a bit more coal. some iron ore in there. Right, now you may have noticed that I haven't run the conveyor belt directly to the boiler or even right next to it. That's because the whole thing with the mining drills where they can themselves deposit the ore onto into a chest or onto a conveyor belt is actually quite rare. Most of the time you need to put something in to move it from one to the other. And that's something as an inserter. We've got recipes for two types of inserts. We've got the burner one, which presumably is coal powered, which sounds awful to me, but presumably it's not as bad as it sounds. Or you've got the basic inserter, which is electrical. So we're gonna make the basic inserters. I'm gonna again, put them in the shortcuts because we'll need quite a few of those. So this is literally just a robot arm and its job is to move coal from the conveyor belt into the boiler. So we need to watch where the arrow is going, rotate it so it's going down. That should now work. Now you'll see we've again got our little thing saying there's nothing to supply electricity. This is because it is an electrical item. So we need to connect it to the steam engine. So now it's ready to go. Won't actually function because 
Well, it will temporarily, but this is about to run out of steam. Literally. Because we're out of coal down here. That's fine, we can put some more coal in. Uh, where are we? No coal coming out of there though. I'm going to be mining some by hand, I think. Just get the smelter going. Ideally, you don't want any of your automated items to ever not be working. So we really want that smelter going all the time, day and night. But of course at the moment, because we're having to do everything manually, it's quite hard to keep up with everything. Right, we shouldn't need a huge amount. Just put some coal into there. And I need more conveyor belts. So we can actually run the conveyor belt straight to the mining drill. And in theory, that should be good to go now. Might go there, so it's only just catching it. I'm just thinking I might want to run a line of them down here because I'll probably have a conveyor belt going down here. So yeah, you see that's now producing coal. So actually, in theory, that should do it. So this coal should come to here. If we've still got electrical power, which I think we will have, the, the inserter will automatically take coal from the conveyor belt and put it in the boiler, like so. It only puts it in if there is there are fewer than five pieces of coal. So it's going to keep it at five at all times. That will then create steam, that generates the electricity, and the electricity then keeps the coal going. So that's brilliant, we've made a loop, we can forget about this now until this runs out of coal. And its expected resources are 4,900 pieces. So for quite a long time we can forget about where our electricity is coming from and just make use of it. I'm going to get rid of this burning burner miner drill because I would rather have it just doing coal now. So let me just put it on a lump of coal. This is basically just to supply us with any coal we still need manually because the smelters still need manual coal so just puts it to use right so we also definitely want an electrical mining drill for the copper i think i'm going to keep heading to the right but we can't make one because, ironically, we don't have enough copper. Okay. Hopefully we shouldn't need too much. So I think we're pretty much approaching the place I'm going to finish. The main thing I wanted to do was set up that loop so that we've got a semi-permanent source of automated electrical power. Let me just get this copper smelted though. So it would be nice to have at least the copper mine going. And I think that will be enough for one session. So hopefully this has made some kind of sense, gives some idea of how the game runs. It's a bit of a slow start because of course you do a lot of stuff manually at the start. There we go. 
Uh, yeah. Still want to move down in a line. So let's go there. Gonna make another iron chest to hold the copper ore. And then we just need to attach power to it. And there we go. So now we've got three electrical mines. One of which is keeping the boiler going. Uh, we've got this burner mining drill. Which probably won't keep going forever. At some point I'll probably just have the electric mining drills producing coal that we want to collect as well. But for now it's just convenient. And we've got a smelter, which in theory will just keep going as much as we can. So I think that pretty much covers it. Pretty pleased with that. Not bad for a first session. You'll notice that even though we are producing pollution, we, um, we haven't been attacked yet. It will happen eventually, but by then we will have some automated defences set up and we'll have a better weapon. But yeah, that's pretty good. Just for the curious, there are a bunch of other maps and things, but if you click on one of the pylons, it automatically tells you about your electricity. So you can see up here we're producing 900 kilowatts of electricity and we're using 270 kilowatts. That's all we need. So we've got quite a bit of spare electricity at the moment coming from this single steam engine. So yeah, that should keep us going for a while. We probably will next time look at... Probably, I think, trying to automate the stone furnaces. And at some point, we are going to want to start doing research. But yeah, because basically the trick we did with the boiler, we could do with this as well. We could automate taking the coal and the iron and the copper ore to the smelters automatically. Which would be a bit better than having to run back and forth and do it all the time. So yeah, brilliant. But yeah, hopefully that gives an idea of the game. And things will get obviously more involved as we build stuff up, as they always do with games like this. But that's effectively pretty much how you always want to start off. Uh, the only other thing I would mention is... Hasn't been too extreme this time because everything's been quite close together, but you are going to notice that I'm going to be spreading out a lot. You will generally find with Factorio that you never have enough space, not even remotely. So the more we can spread things out and give ourselves room for later, the better. So this is actually a lot more compact than it usually is because of the way things worked out. The coal happened to be close to the nearest body of water. The iron and the copper on the other side, so I'm probably going to move their stuff to the right. It's worked out quite nicely. But yeah, we are definitely going to be spreading out a lot. But yeah, I will leave it there for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Just a final note, because this isn't really a strategy game, I'm not really doing it as a main game. It's going to be a kind of thing on the side, so it may not be regularly updated. I'll just see how I do. But, yeah, it's not, um, the priority is always going to be the actual strategy game, so this one may get dropped if it needs to. I'll probably keep it going, I just may not do it as regularly, but we'll see. I may find out of time. But yeah, that's it. I will see you next time.